All right, Shalom, giving all praise and all glory unto Yahweh, Baha Hashem Yahweh Shai, Baha Hashem Rechachudash. Double honors to the elders and apostles, of great millstone that rule well. And Shalom to you, arguing with you, pushing this word, and the glory of your faith and in truth with, with sincerity. As always, I'd like to begin by saying we are the real Hebrew Israelites. The real Israelites, the so called Negroes, Latinos, Hispanics, and Native Americans, West Indians, and West Africans predominantly. However, you are going to get Israelites that do look like the other nations because Israel has been scattered amongst all people for our various captivities. So you are going to get Israelites who may look like the other nations. But if their seed line, which is their nationality, goes back through the lineage of their forefathers to the man in the Bible that was named Israel, then they too are Israelites no matter what they look like. Because as I always say, Numbers 1 and 18 proves that your nationality is determined by the lineage of your forefathers okay so i want to get into this lesson today on the topic of uh, henrietta lax now this is something that when i was researching uh a lot before i found uh, this this truth of this, the bible this is one of the things i was looking into because um it was a very interesting story so I, i've been familiar with this but i just saw this news article which was published on uh the 7th of August 2020 which was just a few days ago and it should go into it so I'll read this article and Lord willing that will go into this topic and be edifying for those who may not have heard of this so it says um, this is from Quartz website it says all of medicine should be paying reparations to Henrietta Lacks so let's get into it it says Henrietta Lacks cells were taken without her consent and used by researchers around the world. When Henrietta Lacks went to Johns Hopkins Hospital with cervical cancers in 1951, a researcher took cells from her tumour and discovered that, unlike other human cells, they survived and continued to replicate in the lab. HeLa cells, as they are known, have since been sold all over the world, allowing countless researchers and companies to benefit. They've contributed to Two Nobel Prizes, the, de the development of polio and HPV vaccines, cancer treatments and AIDS research. A black woman's cells taken without her consent or knowledge transformed science. Now, I'll, I'll, I'll talk about this. Let me just read the article first and I'll say my thoughts. It says, last week two labs announced they would make the first donations in recognition of how they've profited from lax cells. But some scientists feel some scientists are underwhelmed by the field's overall response. The amount of money being the amount of money being discussed versus profits made is ludicrous, says Arthur Kaplan, the head of medical ethics at New York University's School of Medicine. If this is reparations for past racist and class abuse, it isn't even a drop in the bucket. Pure symbolism and nothing more. Last week, life sciences company Abcam, based in the UK, donated an undisclosed amount to the Henrietta Lacks Foundation to support scholarships in science, technology, engineering and math for Miss Lacks' descendants, according to the Wall Street Journal. And Samara Rick Pat Peterson, an investigator at the Howard Hughes Medical Institute and professor of cellular and molecular medicine and biological sciences at the University of California, San Diego said her lab will donate $100 for every four cell lines created by manipulating the HeLa cells. Every lab who's benefited from HeLa cells made a donation, but Dr. Rick Patterson told the Wall Street Journal these small amounts would build up and have a significant impact. So far, though, thousands of other labs have profited from HeLa cells and have failed to give anything back. Lax was largely unknown until her story was revealed by Rebecca Slew in her 200, 2010 book. I think it's around 2010 when I heard of this story, actually, which is interesting. It says in the 2010 book, The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lax. Skloot created the Henrietta Lacks Foundations to fund health, insurance and scholarships for Lacks descendants and told the Wall Street Journal she had hoped co corporations using HeLa cells would donate. Instead, 
Donations have so far mainly come from individuals. The businesses that have benefited from healer cells have a moral obligation to make reparations, even if they don't give the monetary donations, says Jasmine Slaughter, AC Professor of Epidemiology and Community Health at University of Minnesota. There is no amount of dollars that can completely repair the damage that was done, she says. She believes institutions... (coughs) It's like you. <coughs> she believes institutions must acknowledge how they contributed in to harm and uh, then provide resources, financial or otherwise, to adjust the wrongs. Those that don't donate to the Henrietta, Henrietta Lacks Foundation must find other means to make amends for the unethical research practices and structural racism that allowed Henrietta lacks cells to become a staple of science without her or her family's consent, she adds. Nearly half a century since Lacks' death, the majority of scientific institutions that benefit from her cells have failed to adequately respond, in her view. The fact that only two foundations have stepped forward, we, we don't know exactly how much... The donations were, but it's a bit insulting, says Slaughter AC. Do other companies and foundations think they did anything wrong? What is their role in trying to make it right? So that's the end of that article. And let me just do a quick... um, See if anything on Healer Cell comes up here. So obviously the cells are dividing. Let's see. So I'm just going to see what happens if they divide further. This is creating another cell. This is this is this is crazy, man. So, in reality, you can only imagine how massive this tumor must have got to. I mean, it probably looked like something out of Resident Evil, man. Um, but they're keeping it in this lab and they've used it to perform all kinds of medical experiments with. It's been insane. But, um... Let me play this, man. Download a free audio book with your 30-day trial. Whether you're here or here, we're here to help. Imagine something small enough to float on a particle of dust that holds the keys to understanding cancer, virology, and genetics. Luckily for us, such a thing exists in the form of trillions upon trillions of human lab-grown cells called HeLa. Let's take a step back for a second. Scientists grow human cells in the lab to study how they function, understand how diseases develop, and test new treatments without endangering patients. To make sure that they can repeat these experiments over and over and compare the results with other scientists, they need huge populations of identical cells that can duplicate themselves faithfully for years. But until 1951, all human cell lines that researchers tried to grow had died after a few days. Then a Johns Hopkins scientist named George Guy received a sample of a strange-looking tumor. 
dark purple, shiny, jelly-like. The sample was special. Some of its cells just kept dividing and dividing and dividing. When individual cells died, generations of copies took their place and thrived. The result was an endless source of identical cells that's still around today. The very first immortal human cell line. Guy labeled it HeLa after the patient with the unusual tumor, Henrietta Lacks. Born on a tobacco farm in Virginia, she lived in Baltimore with her husband and five children. She died of aggressive cervical cancer a few months after her tumor's cells were harvested, and she never knew about them. So what's so special about the cells from Henrietta Lacks that lets them survive when other cell lines die? The short answer is, we don't entirely know. Normal human cells have built-in control mechanisms. They can divide about 50 times before they self-destruct in a process called apoptosis. This prevents the propagation of genetic errors that creep in after repeated rounds of division. But cancer cells ignore these signals, dividing indefinitely and crowding out normal cells. Still, most cell lines eventually die off, especially outside the human body. Not HeLa, though, and that's the part we can't yet explain. Regardless, when Dr. Guy realized he had the first immortal line of human cells, he sent samples to labs all over the world. Soon the world's first cell production facility was churning out 6 trillion HeLa cells a week. And scientists put them to work, in an ethically problematic way, building careers and fortunes off of Henrietta's cells without her or her family's consent, or even knowledge until decades later. The polio epidemic was at its peak in the early 50s. HeLa cells, which easily took up and replicated the virus, allowed Jonas Salk to test his vaccine. They've been used to study diseases including measles, mumps, HIV, and Ebola. We know that human cells have 46 chromosomes because a scientist working with HeLa discovered a chemical that makes chromosomes visible. HeLa cells themselves actually have around 80 highly mutated chromosomes. HeLa cells were the first to be cloned. They've traveled to outer space. Telama rays, an enzyme that helps cancer cells evade destruction by repairing their DNA, was discovered first in HeLa cells. In an interesting turn of fate, thanks to HeLa, we know that cervical cancer can be caused by a virus called HPV, and now there's a vaccine. HeLa-fueled discoveries have filled thousands of scientific papers, and that number is probably even higher than anyone knows. HeLa cells are so resilient that they can travel on almost any surface. A lab worker's hand, a piece of dust, invading cultures of other cells and taking over like weeds. Countless cures, patents, and discoveries, all made thanks to Henrietta Lacks. Hmm. So let's get into some scriptures. Because really it's quite disturbing, but this is a state of play. Because in most countries now, when you die, Esau has the right to just harvest your organs without even notifying you. And this just goes to show that this devil's been doing this for the longest time. There's nothing new, man. As the scripture says, there's that is that which is was is that which shall be, and there's nothing new under the sun. Let me get that. Yeah, this is wisdom. So Ecclesiastes, not wisdom of Solomon. This is Ecclesiastes, um, chapter one, verse nine, and it says, "The thing which hath been is that which shall be, and that which is done is that which shall be done. And there is no new thing under the sun. Is there anything whereof may, where it may be said, see, this is new? It hath already been of old time, which was before us." Um, let me get some precepts. This is Job 13 and 4. It says, um, But ye are forgers of lies, ye are all physicians of no value. 
Um, and that's, I'm referring to Esau when I say this because um, Esau's doctors are all physicians of no value and they're forgers of lies because they're not really out there to try and cure you. They're out there to try and find more ways to make people sick and kill people, which is what they're doing with a lot of these vaccines. And, you know, one of the major topics that we're dealing with at the moment is this so-called coronavirus vaccine, which Esau wants to try and push on the people. You know what I mean? We shouldn't be shouldn't be getting these vaccines, man, because Esau's a devil. And, uh, you know, they are forgers of lies and all physicians of no value. Um, now, we know that that woman, Henrietta Lacks, was a Jake woman. So let me get um, Jake, Jeremiah, <laughs> Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 16. This says, the portion of Jacob is not like them, for he is the form of all things, and Israel is the rod of his inheritance. Yahweh of hosts is his name. So it says, Jacob is not like them. Jacob is the form of all things. So, you know, when it comes to organ harvesting, Esau typically wants, you know, Jake's organs, Jake's cells. I mean, if you remember that film, I think it was called Get Out some years ago. What did they want? They wanted to take the Jake's uh, eyes and the Jake's organs and everything like that and, and um, so that Esau could prolong his own life. You know, that was a bit of truth in plain sight for your ass right there. Let me get Jer Jeremiah 51 and 19. Once again, it says, The portion of Jacob is not like them. For he is the former of all things, and Israel is the word of his inheritance. Yahweh of hosts is his name. So again, the Most High repeating his words. And then we get Ezekiel 28 and 3. Book of Ezekiel chapter 28 and verse 3 it says behold this is referring to obviously Esau behold thou art wiser than Daniel there is no secret that they can hide from thee with thy wisdom and with thine understanding thou hast gotten rich, thee riches and hast gotten gold and silver into thy treasure by thy great wisdom and by thy traffic hast thou increased thy riches and thine heart is lifted up because of thy riches therefore thus saith the Lord power because thou hast set thine heart as the heart of the Most High. Behold, therefore, I will bring strangers upon thee, and terrible of the terrible of the nations, and they shall draw their swords against the beauty of thy wisdom, and they shall defile thy brightness. They shall bring thee down to the pit, and thou shalt die the deaths of them that are slain in the midst of the seas. Will thou yet say before him that slayeth thee, I am God? But thou shalt be a man, and no God, and in the hand of him that slayeth thee. Thou shalt die the deaths of the uncircumcised by the hands of the strangers, for I have spoken it, saith the Lord Power. Yeah. Yeah. Let me keep reading because there's some more meat in this. Moreover, the word of Yahweh came unto me, saying, Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord Power, Thou sealest up the sum of full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Thou hast been in Eden, in the garden of the Most High. Every precious stone was thy covering. The sardius, topaz, and the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, the carbuncle, and the gold. The workmanship of thy tablets and the, of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day thou was created. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. Thou was upon the holy mountain of the Most High. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou was perfected in, in thy ways from the day thou was created till iniquity was found in thee. 
by the multitude of thy merchandises, they have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. Therefore I will cast thee out as profane, out of the mountain of the Most High, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground, and I will lay thee before kings, that they may behold thee. Thou hast defiled the sanctuaries by the multitude of thine iniquities, by the iniquity of thy traffic. Therefore will I bring forth a fire in the, from the midst of thee. It shall devour thee, and I will bring thee to ashes upon the earth, in the sight of all them that behold thee. All they that know thee among the people shall be astonished at thee. Thou shalt be a terror, and shalt thou and shall never thou be any more. So um, it says Esau is profane. Let me get that. Is it Malachi 1 and 4? Yes, it says, The burden of the word of Yahweh to Israel by Malachi. I have loved you, saith Yahweh. Yet ye say, Wherein hast thou loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother, saith Yahweh? Yet I loved Jacob. And I hated Esau, and laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. Whereas Edom saith, We are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. Thus saith Yahweh of hosts, They shall build, and I will throw down. And they shall call them the border of wickedness, and the people against whom Yahweh hath indignation forever. Uh, profane man is Esau, is sold his. Um, uh, So lucky, just one more precept I want to get about uh, the profaneness of Esau, which profane meaning outside the temple, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Hebrews 12 and 16 is what I'm looking for. It says... Lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. For you know how afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, the blessing which would have been eternal life, you know, to never die, never get sick, live forever, have spiritual powers, you know, being able to fly, being as strong as Samson, you know, being as wise as Solomon, being able to do greater miracles, I mean, do, being able to do all the miracles that Yahashai did and greater, that would have been the blessing and birthright of Esau. And he's lost that. So now Esau in his own way. On his left hand side. Is trying to regain his birthright. That's why Esau's trying to harvest. These healer cells. Because Esau's looking for, for some other way to come up. Some other way to inherit immortality. Which is what he lost. In losing his birthright. To his brother Jacob. Which is all set up through the spirit anyway. Because the birthright was always meant to go to Jacob. You know, Esau, Esau was, was set up for failure by the Most High, to be honest. You know, and he's played his part. Um, he's played his part perfectly, but we all have our part to play in this story. And it's up to the Most High how it goes down. So let me read this again. It says, Lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one more slot of meat sold his birthright. For ye know how that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected. For he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. So there ain't no place of repentance for Esau. Your judgment is coming. And that judgment is, is pretty much summed up in the book of Obadiah. First chapter. Let me read from Obadiah 1 and 15. It says, For the day of Yahweh is near upon all the heathen. As thou hast done, it shall be done unto thee. Thy reward shall return upon thine own head. 
For as ye have drunk upon my holy mountain, so, so shall all the heathen drink continually. Yea, they shall drink and they shall swallow down, and they shall be as though they had not been. But upon Mount Zion there shall be deliverance, and there shall be holiness, and the house of Jacob shall possess their possessions. And the house of Jacob shall be a flame, and the house of Joseph a f- sorry, and the house of Jacob shall be a fire, and the house of Joseph a flame, and the house of Esau for stubble, and they shall kindle in them and devour them, and there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau, for Yahweh have spoken it. So there you go, that's the judgment for you Edomites. So no matter no matter how much um genetic manipulation of of human cells you try to do. You're never going to attain that immortality. That ain't for you, man. You lost your birthright. No matter what wickedness, no matter what satanic and demonic wickedness you do on the left-hand side, you're never going to get that blessing. So with that, giving all praise and all glory unto Yahweh. Bar Hashem Yahweh Shai. Bar Hashem Yahweh Double honours to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone and full well. And a sincere shalom to the Akim that be pushing this word around the globe in faith and in truth and in sincerity. So until the next lesson I say Shalawam and a Baba Bal. Kamiya Shawala.